Hey everyone, welcome back. Blades of God here from Hammer Bros Gaming. Today we're going to be showing you how to get through Chapter 9 on the original Dead Space for the Epic Tier 3 Engineer Achievement. This walkthrough is going to be a no cheats, no exploits guide. Um, I'm not going to be showing you, if you've seen any of the other videos in this guide series, you're going to know I'm not showing you how to do the basic stuff like kinesis or stasis or shooting or reloading, anything like that. This is a survival walkthrough. I'm going to show you how to get through certain engagements and battles and where to find uh, equipment and different strategies that I used along the way. Alright, right off the bat we got a bench here right as soon as we get off the tram. I had two power nodes in my inventory. I was able to use one of them because as a rule I always, always keep one power node on my person for any equipment rooms that require a power node to get into. They're almost always worthwhile, so I always keep one power node on my person. So as you make your way past the bench, past the shop, there's some supplies that you can pick up. Uh, I go and grab all of those and even go into the next room first, grab everything that I can, then go back to the store and offload all anything that I didn't need. Uh, you can see I have quite a few med packs and stuff in my inventory and quite a bit of ammo. That's a good thing. We are going to need that. This is this level houses probably the most difficult fight in the entire game in my opinion, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. So you go into an airlock, you're in zero G right now. Um, in this room there's going to be, I think there's six of these power cores that are highly radioactive, you're told. So you need to jump down to the ground and then bust all six of these circuits. You can stomp on them to save ammo as you can see I'm doing here. Be aware that as you remove the nodes from, or the orbs, whatever, from the ship, you're going to get jumped. So once you open the hatch to the outside of the ship and vent all the oxygen, you actually get jumped by a lurker, which is that first baby with tentacles enemy that you saw I just killed, and a jumper, which I'm engaging right now. The lurker, the strategy there is you want to wait until the tentacles pop out of its back and then aim for the tentacles, that's the weak point. And the lurker, obviously, the two front arms, the head and the tail are the weak points. Once you take out these enemies, there are oxygen refill stations on both sides of this, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, cargo port or the big doors that open to space. So go ahead and use those as often as you need them. There is no limit to how many times you can refill your oxygen. After you throw your first radioactive ball of death out of the ship, you're going to get jumped by two more of these jumpers. They are the tougher variants. They have darker skin. They deal more damage. They take more punishment before they die. The upside is that once you kill them, they're normally good for better rewards. So you get more credits, like that's a 3,000 credit, and you get a medium med pack instead of what would probably normally be a small. So once I took them out, I refilled the oxygen again. Here you can see I have a bit of a hard time getting this, uh, that node out the door. Um, and you can see it was actually still glowing against the floor there. So instead of uh, trying to use Kinesis to shoot them, you can actually kind of use momentum to your advantage and loft them out by dragging them towards the hole and letting go instead of shooting them, and they should float right out. After the next couple of nodes go out into space, you're going to get a couple of more lurkers. Not a big deal. This part isn't too, too challenging. Every time you throw one of those radioactive balls out of the, out of the door, just take a second, look around, make sure you're not getting snuck up on by any enemies. You could see that the reason I was aware of those enemies was because I actually got hit by their ranged attack. So, you don't want that to happen. Um, make sure that as you're, as you're killing off all these enemies, you pick up all the rewards. You're in zero G, so depending upon where they are when they die, the items that they drop may float away so look carefully um, and make sure that you're not leaving any valuable stuff behind because again like I said come the end of this level we're going to be wanting every med pack and bit of ammo we can have in our inventory there so we want to have a fully stocked inventory once you get all the radioactive bits out of the ship you're going to lift the lock down and be able to enter the ship that crashed into the Ishimura um, this is this is where we encounter like a little bit of nightmare fuel in my opinion. Um, so we're going to advance, there's only one way, you can't really get too too lost in here. When you get into this first room with all these movable crates on wheels, uh, make sure you look around in the first area, there's quite a bit of ammo to find, there's a couple of dead ends that you can go to to pick up a few other odds and end pieces of uh, inventory or pieces of equipment. Um, once you get here you're going to want to just kind of hang back, do not rush ahead. 
And this is where we first get introduced to these spastic, like, freak out, super fast enemies. Uh, Hammond told us as we entered that they all had built-in stasis units that somehow merged with their flesh and made them really fast. And that's what you see here. They are very jerky. They're very, uh... They're the only enemy that actually are in the game that I genuinely think is frightening just because of the weird way that they move. But thankfully, just like the Necromorphs that we have fought up to this point, they die the same way. Gotta just aim for the legs, the arms, and the head. Don't shoot center mass except to slow them down if they're getting a little too close. Once you take out the three um, spastic Necromorphs, take a left and you're going to see this little hidden treasure trove of a couple of items. So make sure you pick that up. I check my health right here. You can see I've got, uh, what, one, two, three, four, five, almost ten med packs. Or, I did have ten med packs. I used a little small one. I had plenty of, uh, plenty of pulse rifle ammo and a stasis unit. Uh, advance down here, plus past those two gravity panels, you'll get one more of these new necromorphs to jump out at you. Again, one enemy at a time, not a big deal. Just shoot them in the legs, slow them down. It's one of the great things about the pulse rifle. Even center mass shot. Oh, yeah, don't do this. Don't walk into the fire like I did. Uh, the center, the pulse rifle, if you hit him center mass, usually is enough to stagger him, especially once it's fully upgraded like mine is. So, it's a good way to just slow him down and buy yourself some time. When you enter this next room, do not unstack the crates that are directly across from where you enter that are against the wall. Uh, if you do, it'll spawn an additional necromorph that you really don't need to deal with. So grab the power source, turn around, launch it across the room, because that's where we're going to take it with us. Uh, pick up all of the items and clean out all the boxes in this room. Take your battery and just continue to carry it along the way. There is going to be another fight in this room, a couple of the reanimating units. So as you can see, I'm taking my time finding all the corpses, stomping their arms and legs off, making sure that there's nothing there for the reanimators to reanimate. Um, as I'm kind of going through this, as I've already talked about what's happening right here, I'll just say a couple of other things about this guide. I'm only using two weapons. I'm using the Pulse Rifle and the Plasma Cutter. A couple of reasons for that is that the Pulse Rifle, when upgraded, has one of the best damage per second uh, stats of any of the guns, in my opinion. Also, the ammo is fairly cheap, so it's easy to stay stocked up if you run out. doesn't break the bank. The Plasma Cutter is probably the most well-rounded weapon in the game, so between those two, you have all the firepower you need to complete this on Impossible. And another thing is that the more weapons you have, or the more weapons you buy and have in inventory, the greater variety of ammunition you're going to get from enemies. And we want to focus on having plenty of ammunition for the guns that we have on us, not the guns that we would potentially have in the safe. So, any ammo, or the little bit of ammo you get for the other weapons, you can always sell that off, which gives you additional credits to buy more power nodes, and we like power nodes. So we have a, uh, after we clear that out, there's <coughs> Excuse me, there's a safe spot. We can save our data, save our progress, hop in the elevator. We got a bit of a long ride and some dialogue. And once we reach the top, we're kind of in a, a messy room here. We're going to hang a hard right. No enemies, so to speak, in here. We're just going to pick up a few extra items. There's a wall locker and a uh, box on the floor. And in some of the wreckage is actually usually another item back behind the fire. We're going to come across into this room and face a snake man. So. This room isn't too, too bad. I actually come very close to dying here, which is, I was very grateful that I had my health or my HP upgraded as much as I did. Uh, you'll see that in just a minute, but I get snuck up on by a couple of the walking grenades and I back up because I'm trying to bottleneck all these enemies together. And what I'm hoping to do is right here, hit that grenade arm or the explosive arm and I was hoping it was going to kill everything. Now I thought it did. I didn't see anything moving, so I kind of snuck out because I heard there was another one of these uh, walking grenades out here, and I was trying to figure out, well, I could stasis him, but I'm just going to shoot him and give, him, give myself some distance. I'm trying really hard to shoot his arm off, and then I get hit by another one of the Snake Man's appendages, but I hit the walking grenade's explosive arm, he explodes, kills himself, kills the last part of the Snake Man, and we are all set for the moment. So grabs the supplies, come into this little room with the shooting gallery and as soon as you come in here you're going to want to turn around i didn't do it fast enough and i took a grenade right to the face and as you can see it almost killed me i mean i've got one i get sneezed on right now and i die so i've got one more grenade right in front of me i'm trying to figure out what to do i decide to just go ahead and lay into his body instead of trying to take off an appendage because i was afraid that if i hit that uh 
that explosive arm, I was going to die. So I went against the traditional wisdom of this game. I shot center mass with the pulse rifle to stop him from advancing anymore until he died, and then I waited for his explosive arm to roll away and then shot it to get it out of the way in case it accidentally blew up when, you know, if there was more enemies coming. So I go over to the bench, I had one, I had two nodes in my inventory, so I could only spend one. Then I come to the shooting range, and uh, I actually have a, gui a separate guide for the shooting range achievement um, on our channel, and I will link that in our description. But, so I sped up the, the video play even more here, just because you don't have to watch me play through the entire shooting range, but I was <clears throat> actually filming, I actually pulled our guide for the shooting range from this gameplay, so anyway, it's just going to take a minute to play through. Um, it's a nice idea to stop here, especially if you're low on ammo or health, because every level that you complete in the shooting gallery gives you some supplies. It doesn't cost anything, you have infinite ammo for whatever gun that you're using, and every level, like I said, every level that you complete, you get either ammo, uh, you get a semiconductor, you get med packs, and then if you complete all five levels, you get an additional power node. And with a bench right there, that's basically a free upgrade. So, in my opinion, take the time, do the shooting range, get the goodies that you get for winning, and uh, yeah, just take a small break from your normal terrifying Dead Space run. So. Before I advance, I top off my health using the small med pack that I had in my inventory. There's a nice stasis recharge right in the wall in the next room, so top off your stasis. And I struggle with this room a little bit. Um, if you've played through, which if you're on Impossible, you've already played through once, at least once. But you have to stasis that, la that out of control laser. I don't know what it is. It looks like a surgical laser. Um, and... To get by it and I decide that I want to get the supply box that's on the ground on the other side so I double back refill my stasis go back into the room and you're gonna see here I stasis it at the wrong time so the lasers are in my way so I wait for it to I guess thaw out or for the stasis to run out try again and completely whiff on hitting the thing and almost walk into a laser I get frustrated I double back again to refill my stasis this time I successfully hit it and wait for the lasers to go by, get the item, and we're on our way into the level some more. As soon as we go into the next room, turn right, head down the hallway. Before you get to the end, turn around, because as you can see, I was too slow, and I actually got jumped by one of these new fast necromorphs. You're going to have a combination of necromorphs and uh, walking grenades coming at you here, but they don't drop in behind you if you're all the way at the end of the hallway, so it's a good bottleneck. Uh, I was a little worried that that grenade's walking grenade's arm was going to be too close and when it blew up it would hurt me but thankfully again I went counterintuitive I went center mass with my shots and managed to kill it without detonating the arm I was trying to pick it up and throw it at some of the other enemies but for whatever reason my uh, kinesis wasn't working very well so as, once you clean them out if you didn't grab it already there's a power node at the end of that hall and a blue box on the wall continue down the room or back down the hall past the door that we came in there's plenty of supplies on the ground here. There's a couple of boxes to grab. And there's a save station here. Please, please, please save your data here because this is this next room is arguably the most difficult fight in the game. Um, I hate this room. I hate this fight more than any, like I said, any fight, any part of Dead Space. I hate this more than Dead Space 2's eye poke machine. I just... It's not fun, um, and I actually die on this run here, and I kind of I left it in the guide just to show you how overwhelming it can get on Impossible if you don't keep your enemies back. Um, even with stasis, even having plenty of ammo, they just all close on me. Things go sideways really quickly. Uh, I take a hit right here from both the fast Necromorph and from a Lurker that's shooting its range attack at me. I'm trying to heal as quick as I can but they're doing more damage than I can heal from. So now I'm going to show you how you how this should go. Uh, walk into the room. You can get on the right in the second bay that's open, I believe. There is a large med pack, and you can actually get all the items up to the first pillar. As long as you don't pass the, pass the first pillar, the lockdown won't initiate. So as soon as you hear that lockdown uh, initiate, you want to backtrack towards the door, and... If you don't go up too far, as you can see, 
All the necromorphs are unaware that I'm here. Well, except for this guy. As soon as I start shooting, it's going to draw some aggro from some of the enemies. And as you can see in the first run where I died, I was using the plasma cutter. This time I swapped over, I'm using the pulse rifle. Again, this is why we upgraded the pulse rifle. This is why we love the pulse rifle on this run. It has really good stopping power. It's got a high rate of fire. It's got a very large magazine once it's upgraded. And if you've been following this guide, you should be able to have this upgraded completely at this point. Um, you can see even hitting enemy center mass, it completely stuns them. The lurker and that jumper, I was hitting them in the face and they just were standing still. Uh, and you can really, you have 175 shots before you have to reload, so that's plenty to buy yourself some breathing room. Um, once you've cleaned out all the enemies around you, I can see a lurker that's approaching right now, but I have a, a walking grenade down there that I'm trying to snipe, doing a little bit of damage at a time. I'm not being very conservative with ammo right here. I'm not trying to make great shots and just hit limbs. I am shooting center mass. I am slowing things down. I Like this guy right here. He ran right up on me. And using the pulse rifle, I was able to push him back so he couldn't twitch and hit me. Um, it's, it's just a really good gun. I would highly recommend it for your impossible playthrough. So anyway, this is going to be kind of a slow fight. It's going to take a little bit of time. You need to keep enemies off of you and the best way to do that is keep them at the other end of this long corridor as you can see there's nowhere to take cover you can't really bottleneck enemies you can't see very well on the left side of where these pillars are so there is a chance that you can be getting snuck up on you could see i got a little nervous there i took out that jumper's leg and i decided to come check or turn and check if there was anything sneaking up on me because i could hear the walking grenade but i didn't see it so i thought he might have been coming down the left side to blindside me but he was still way down there. I hadn't drawn his aggro, so I decided to just keep sniping at him. And now I only have one enemy left. It's the carrier unit, which the trick with these carrier units, if you haven't been following my guides, I've explained it in my previous guides, but I'll explain it again now. What you want to do is you want to normally stasis them and then take out both their legs and their arms before the stasis runs out. Otherwise, when they die, if they're not, uh, if they're unstasist when they die they will release a flipper swarm that will really really ruin your day um, if you can take out their legs and arms do enough damage before the stasis runs out they die they can't release the flipper swarm saves you a lot of time and a lot of headache so as you can see that's what I'm doing right here stasis there goes an arm there goes a leg then there goes another leg the body just decides to keep jiggling like jello for a little bit of extra time just to be humorous I guess so that's the last enemy. The lockdown has lifted. Now we're going to go hunting for anything that we can find in this room. We burned through a lot of ammo, potentially a lot of health packs. Uh, there's The central pillars have wall lockers on the left and right sides. I, they're, not always, they're not all unlocked or openable, but most of them are. So definitely take your time, check them all, and just be very thorough looking at the floor and in your corners because you had some of those explosive walking grenades and if they explode near some of the items, it will push it to the sides and the corners. So once you've picked up everything, you think you've picked up everything, there's a store conveniently located right at the end of this room or at the end of this engagement. So go down there, sell off your conductors, sell off any of the ammo types that aren't compatible with the plasma cutter or the pulse rifle, um, buy up any additional power nodes, or if you need more ammo, med packs, anything like that, now's the time to stock up on them. Uh, admittedly, the hardest part of this level is out of the way, but it never hurts to be prepared because we do have one more pretty... It's not a huge fight. I mean, it's just a brute, but it can be difficult because it deals a lot of damage. So it never hurts to have the extra med packs and ammo on you. So here we are. We went into the next room, uh, clean up all the ammo. There's some boxes on the ground you can open. And now we're into another blast room or engine room. Um, this... I. <sighs> This room can be a pain. Sometimes it feels like you're behind this turbine and you still end up getting burned. It happens to me right here, or coming right up here, I end up getting burned again. I, I did not have good luck with fire in this level. Like, see, I was too far away from the turbine, I think, and I ended up getting roasted. So make sure you're sticking very close to this turbine. Use kinesis, grab a hold of it, move it when the fire is not being blasted at you. Um, you'll pick up pretty quickly what the pattern is for between blasts and your safe time. So what I do is I just 
Wait, 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 grab it, move just a little bit, make sure I'm pressed right up against the turbine when the fire starts so I don't take damage. Take it slow, this, you know, you're not, there's no enemies in this area, it's not a timed thing, you have all the time in the world. Just move a little bit at a time and make sure that you don't get caught in that fire because it hurts a lot. And if your health isn't upgraded, I think it's a one-shot kill, um, like I said, if you haven't upgraded your rig for HP. But I've never tried this without upgraded HP, so I can't say that for sure, so don't quote me on that. So as you move these turbines up and down, you're going to shoot three circuits on the left and right. Once all six circuits are cut, you're going to end up getting the, I can't remember what the thing was called, but you're going to get the piece that you need. You're going to get your objective. Go into the room behind where the objective was. There's going to be a couple of crates up at the top of the ramp, a couple more at the bottom. Then you're going to head into this next room, which is the bottom of the turbine room you were just in. Hammond finally shows back up. He's in a bad way, limping a little bit. He's panicking, and that's why he's panicking. That is a brute. That is a brute who is actually an upgraded brute. He does more damage, he takes more damage, and he is just angry. So, same tactics apply here. Um, I waited a split second too long to stasis him, and you can see my health is empty. I should have died. I don't know why I didn't die. I did stasis him, but it was a split second too late. His momentum carried him into me, and I took a hit. And I was almost on full health at that point. So you can see... These things mean business. That charge attack will probably kill you if you're not full health with upgraded HP. Shoot for his shoulders just like we have with every other brute we fought so far. When he hunkers down into his defensive, I don't know what you want to call it, when it, his ball form, I guess, hit him with stasis. You saw I walked around and just literally held the trigger on the pulse rifle and unloaded into his shoulder. Uh, I continue to do the same thing. Wait till he charges. Strife to the side just a little bit to get out of his way. Turn around, hit him with stasis, and shoot. Um... There's no new tactics here. The biggest change is that you are in a very tight area. You don't have a lot of room to move around. So it can get a little tricky. So you want to stick to one side or the other. And then when he charges, either stick to the right and then strafe left or vice versa. So just do those tactics. Continue on with him. Pick away at his health until he's dead. He usually, I think, always drops a diamond semiconductor. Which I'm pretty sure it's the only one in the game that you find. I, I Again, I'm not sure about that. But make sure you grab the semiconductor he drops. It is worth a lot of credits. Uh, and now we're just fleeing the ship. There's no more enemies at this point until you get out of the ship. There's a couple of supply lockers on the wall and on the floor that you can grab. We're going to hop back in the elevator, which I'm pretty sure every safety manual I've ever seen or every safety poster I've ever seen says in the case of a fire or an emergency, do not use the elevator. But apparently Isaac doesn't read safety manuals and we're in the middle of an alien invasion, so I guess safety kind of goes out the window. Follow your waypoint, you're going to keep going into the airlock, we're heading back to the Ishimura right now. As soon as you do your zero G jump to the Ishimura's airlock, the ship's going to start exploding. Come through the airlock, open the door, we're back where we started, there's one more of that new fast necromorph, the, the twitchers or the freakers, whatever we want to call them. Um, take them out the normal way, legs first, then the arms, they're really creepy looking when they, when they do that. They get up on their hands and they kind of look like spiders. But anyway, once he's dead, we're going to head over to the store. We're going to sell off what we don't need. Again, we want to sell that diamond semiconductor. We want to sell off any of the incompatible uh, ammo types. You see, I went into my safe and I pulled a couple of additional med packs out. I bought a few um, power nodes. And as you can see at the bench, I have seven nodes right now, which means I can do six upgrades and still have one left in my inventory. So I max out my plasma cutter. Go to my uh, stasis and decide, okay, well, I'm going to get ready for a duration upgrade next. And then hop on the tram and hit the button and you're done. There it's it. That's chapter 9 in the books. I hope you guys found this guide helpful and I will catch you guys next time for chapter 10. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more content like this, please like and subscribe. You can also check us out on Twitch at Hammer Bros Gaming. I am Blades of God, and until next time, have a great day, everyone.